Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegel Guy. Probably the most dangerous thing about a homemade metal foundry is pouring the molten metals. So I decided to make a crucible cradle to make things a lot safer. This is just a metal cage that surrounds the crucible and when dealing with lower temperature metals it really improves handling. I took some flat bar steel and cut it to fit the shape of my crucible. Using my angle grinder stand I was able to make nice straight cuts. It was also nice and easy to lightly score either side of the bar where I wanted to bend the steel. Clamping it in the vise and tapping it took care of the bends but it was necessary to reinforce these with welds. Now this was the first time I've done any welding guys so no laughing at my ham fisted attempts please. We've all got to learn and clearly I've got a lot to learn about welding. Because of the curving sides of the crucible I didn't really design it as such. I just figured things out as I was going which isn't really the best idea. I knew I wanted a loop of some kind and I originally came up with this. After a couple of tests I realised that it could be positioned better and I'll show you that later on. I doubled up the steel at the bottom to make a level surface for the crucible to stand on. I needed something for the cradle to pivot and swing from and I already had this threaded rod to hand. After a couple of holes were drilled in, four nuts squeezed the steel sides in just slightly and gripped things nicely. I didn't want to permanently enclose the crucible but it did need securing and I had the idea of a swing arm that could be held in place with the steel nuts. After a bit of terrible welding I came up with something that I thought would work. I also added a small upright to the bottom to prevent the crucible sliding forward. There's just enough clearance to lift the crucible in and out. Here I've trimmed things down a little. It's actually surprisingly well balanced. Just when I was feeling very smug about the design, I discovered that it wouldn't fit in my foundry. That's what happens when you don't plan ahead. Luckily cutting the swing arm in two reduced the size just enough and it still worked effectively. With the cradle resting on the foundry I was able to work out where I needed to cut some slots for the cradle to rest. I used some strips of tape to mark the locations. Careful use of a masonry drill helped me carve out these two slots. Obviously the threaded rod at the top of the cradle would make it very difficult to feed the crucible. But at this stage the steel at the side of the cradle is under tension. Not a lot but if I cut the threaded bar right now it would spring out. This meant that the steel had to be annealed. So I placed the crucible and cradle in my foundry and heated it up until the steel was glowing as you can see here. Annealing removes the internal tensions within metals through heat so I allowed the steel to cool naturally then I repeated the process a couple more times. The following day the crucible wasn't looking any worse for wear. The welds had all held up nicely and the metal was tarnished as expected. Once I'd cut away a large section of the threaded rod the sides did ease out a little but not too much I think. To lift the cradle in and out of the foundry I originally came up with the idea of this old bucket handle and it did work though it never felt very secure to me. I then came up with a much better design using these old barbecue tongs. I simply rounded the ends with my angle grinder then drilled a hole in each tongue just a little bit bigger than the threaded rod. Here you can see how easily these tongs work. Their natural spring makes things very secure. Anyone wondering how my homemade foundry is doing or the plaster insulation I added later on can see it here. The foundry is just as good as when I made it and the plaster insulation several weeks on and several uses later is still holding up really well. There's a few small cracks and a little shrinkage but it's still working perfectly and it's still nice and stable. For the tilting arm I took some thin steel bar and bent it in my vise. I notched a few grooves with my angle grinder to help the adhesive grip it better. 
I drilled a hole in an old wooden broom handle, but it was a little too large. To reduce the slack, I cut opposing slots across the hole to make a crude wooden chuck. I mixed up a strong two-part epoxy adhesive and squeezed this throughout the hole on the slots. Then I added a couple of Jubilee clips to squeeze the wooden fingers together, gripping the bar in place. It held up a treat. In use, the cradle really does make for a controlled, safe pour. OK, I'm doing a terrible job here, but I should be paying less attention to the camera and more attention to the pour, to be honest. Either way, I'm sure you can see the benefit. After several outings now, the cradle is still good and strong. It sagged a bit under the heat, but it still fits and works well. I think a circular support frame would have probably prevented this sagging, and maybe that's something I can revisit another time. I also mentioned earlier that I repositioned the control loop. Lower is better, I found. So if you're thinking of building a cradle, think about that in your design. I'm very pleased with the cradle. It feels much safer to me when dealing with molten metals, and that can't be a bad thing. The cradle wouldn't last long in a charcoal foundry, but if you use gas or oil, it should last a good long time. Mine's had several outings now, and even though I check it before every use, it's still good and strong. And that's it folks, a finished video. I hope you enjoyed this idea and found it helpful. If you did, please like it. If you didn't, why not let me know why, as I'm always eager to improve my videos. Please keep those requests coming in, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Do check out my YouTube channel and of course my other videos. And above all folks, thanks for watching.